Hey everybody, welcome back to Hardworking Man. Today we're up at our property. We have some last minute things we need to work on for our deer season. And we're gonna take you around, show you what those things are. But first, I'm excited for this. It's gonna change how we do things up here at the property. So if you guys are like us, when we come up to this rural area, we have zero cell phone signal. We can't text each other when we're out here. We, he can't text anybody if he's working alone up here, which is dangerous in my mind. And we really were trying to figure out a way that could make it work. And then we were contacted by High Boost, and they have this. It is a cell phone booster. It's gonna make it so that we can use our cell phones when we're up here. Like Rachel said, we need to have cell phone service here for a couple different reasons. One, so if I'm going out by myself or somebody is, they can let people know what they're doing before they go to do it. Two, Rachel's a realtor. Three, with my job, I need to be contacted sometimes. And when we're up here, the signal is hit or miss. Sometimes you can get a text out, rarely a phone call, and you can never watch YouTube. So we're gonna address that today. Now, this high boost signal booster comes with two parts. Well, several parts, but two main parts. One is an external antenna, which I've set up there right now but that needs to be higher. I wasn't comfortable climbing this without someone else here because it seems sturdy, but the higher you get, the less sturdy it seems. And if I fall, I want Rachel to be here to see it. Second is an internal receiver slash signal booster that this cable goes to. So this is just a soft install right now. I got it run through a window. Once we find out how this thing works and if it works and it's a viable option, I'll do a permanent install where I drill the cable through the wall, where I nail it all down and we get everything set up. But for now, I'm gonna climb up there. And once I get above the roof line, my plan is to turn to the other side so that I'm on the house side of the antenna so that if it starts falling, it hits the house and maybe I can jump off onto the roof. So wish me luck. These steps, which probably aren't really steps, are a little bit far apart. I don't know how high I'm gonna go. <laughs> I gotta get above the roof line. I don't even like standing here if that thing comes down. Yeah. Rachel would not, absolutely would not climb this. I, do not like I mean, height. there's probably a lot of people that wouldn't climb this. You can see it's getting a bit shakier. I'm gonna maybe go I should have maybe died in before I did this. I mean how high do you have to put it? You're gonna strap on to that thing, then you're guaranteed to fall down with well, it. Well, yeah, I know, but I don't know what's the best idea. I should maybe get one higher. I don't think you should. Yeah, but I gotta be able to watch YouTube. This is how I used to hang tree stands when I was younger with no safety harness. I would climb a tree and just sort of hook my arm and uh, screw in tree steps and hook in uh, tree stands and whatever. I'm pretty lucky over the years that I never fell, knock on wood. Seems pretty sus. How is a normal average person going to do this? Well, a normal average person probably would be using a ladder or being on the roof instead of doing what I'm doing. All right, he has it attached and I'm going to go inside so I can tell him which direction it needs to face to get us the best signal. All right, Rachel's heading in. She's going to try to yell first instead of call so I don't have to try to handle my cell phone up here. I'm not sure if I can hear her or not because my hearing's not the greatest. I'll be happy when I climb down from here. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm just afraid of this antenna falling. All right, uh, the battery died on the camera while I was up there and I didn't notice, so I'm not sure how much of that you got. But the yelling worked okay except for a lot of vehicles in this area don't have mufflers apparently, so every time a loud car would go by, I couldn't hear. But we have the antenna up. We got not full strength signals in there, but way better than we did. So let's go see if we have some cell service. Ooh, he's at 5G. All right, so this is the inside part. This is the signal booster receiver. So the cable hooks to it, you plug it in. It shows you your strengths here. We don't have the greatest strengths, but like Rachel showed, we have 5G. 
And more importantly, we can watch Hard Working Man now when we're up here. That was pretty good. You could never, ever play a video here before. We'll unplug the signal booster and we'll show you what our normal service is here so you know we're not making this up. So now you can see with the signal booster turned off, we have no service. We had LTE for a hot second, but we have, oh, there's LTE back, which you can usually get a text out here and there. When you have LTE, you just can't move or you'll lose it. So I think this high boost is going to be a huge addition to Deer Camp. So as you can see, high boost works. It worked fantastic. I'm excited, so now I don't have to worry about not being able to contact any of my clients or have them get a hold of me, and I'm not going to miss important phone calls, and we'll be safe. So if you're interested in picking up a high boost for yourself, we're going to put a link in the description. You can check it out, see if you think it'll be a fit for you. One thing I like to do right at the beginning of season is fill all my water holes out there. You saw us dig one in. I've got another two out there. You want to have them filled to the top because over the season if you don't get rains it evaporates the deer drink it and it gets lower and you don't want to have to go back out there later in the season and add water so we're going to get 20 gallons at a time set it on the implement on the back of the tractor and when we go past the water hole we'll fill it up and we'll have to make a few runs but we won't show you all of them i also have the jet sled we always bring a chainsaw out because there's downed ash trees over our trail sometimes we got to clear them i got the little milwaukee hatchet so we can do a little bit of trimming we got a little limb lopper here, a can of wasp spray for the deer blind. You never want to go out to your blind for the first time of the year without some wasp spray. The solo spreader, if you spread fertilizer or seed, small seeds, any kind of seeds, and you do it by hand, forget the bags, get yourself a solo spreader, you can thank me later. This is some winter rye. This stuff will grow on concrete, not rye grass. That's what comes in a lot of the throw and grow mixtures. Buy some winter rye, it's fairly cheap, deer love it. And like I showed in our last property prep video, the Fisker's pruner. This thing comes in so handy. So we put lids on just so that it doesn't go sloshing everywhere in our drive out. <laughs> This is the watering hole you saw us put in with the backhoe. Um, if you don't have a water source on your property, this is a great way to get water for the deer to drink, to keep them on your property, because isn't that the goal here? Um, Dean from outside of Michigan just bought his first tub to put in his own watering hole, so that's exciting. It's actually really fun when you're out hunting and then you see the deer come to your watering hole and realize it actually is very effective. <laughs> And a little uh, tip, if you didn't see the other video, we like to put a long stick, something inside of here, so that if a little critter happens to fall in, they're not gonna drown, they're not gonna die, they'll be able to get out, because the last thing you want is a watering hole full of dead squirrels or something, that'd be awful. All right, now normally, I would not be out here right now. It's the second day of Michigan's archery season. And I don't like being out here during the season, but it's unseasonably warm. I hunt cold fronts, so uh, it's not that big of a deal. And we stay on the perimeter of our property. We don't hunt the inside. There's houses all along the road here, so the scent's not as big of a deal. But it's still not perfect to be out here right now, but we got to get this done.
right, right behind me here is our blind. It's the only blind, really, that we use on the property. We have a lot of open ladder stands that we hunt out of otherwise. And that's the blind I killed my biggest buck to date out of uh, during bow season. East and west, north and south, shooting windows of the blind. We planted some brassicas, but it did not go great. So we're gonna overseed some rye to try to make up for that and get something good for the deer to eat during hunting season. And we did come out earlier this year and clear some shooting lanes, but things kept growing. So heat's gonna get some of that cleared up so that we have nice, straight, clean, clear shooting lanes. So don't have to worry about that when we're up in the sand hunting. Oh. <laughs> so my bag of rye, mice had eaten the bottom out of it. So I was trying to do it upside down and the tie came off. So now luckily I was smart enough to put it in a tote. This will, I guess, maybe even better show the versatility of this solo spreader. A lot of people use the Earthway bag spreaders. I've used them before. A lot of people recommend them. That's because they've never tried a solo spreader. I love this thing. Every time on the hunting habitat groups on Facebook, Michigan Sportsman, it's a chat page, people ask what spreader. Once they buy a solo, they're like, oh my gosh, the greatest one ever. So before I fill it real quick, which bags are a pain to fill, this you can see it's rigid. Some people don't know how to use this and that's why they don't like it. They take this strap and put it around their neck and then they say, oh, it flops and it's heavy and it hurts my neck. Well, that's because you're not using it right. It's got two hooks up here so you can use it either way. You don't put it around your neck. You angle it across your back and then you hook it here. And that's why people that don't like the solo don't because they don't know what they're doing. I can walk like this. I can easily spread. You can adjust it if you want it high or lower. You can meter how much seed you want out, spread it right to left. And when you get done, if you're riding a four wheeler or something, you can simply flip it around like that to go into and out of the woods. This is the best handheld spreader you're ever gonna buy for tiny small seeds, rye seeds, unless you're doing great big plots and you need a three point spreader or a toe behind spreader, this is the way to go. Let's get it filled up, get this rye spread out because we're running out of time. I don't care that I spill some where I'm filling it because it's in my food plot. There's a little cover you can put on here. You don't need it unless maybe it's raining or something. But uh, now let's get this strapped on and go overseed this trail. Looks like a baby carrier. See, I do know what it's like to be pregnant. <laughs> All right, this is just a big little open plot right by our blinds that branches the two trails off. norm today but let us know in the comments do you like hearing about the other parts of our lives Heath has a plethora of knowledge about deer habitat it is his passion when I say it's his passion it is his passion so if you want to hear more you want to hear Heath impart some of his wisdom and knowledge he's gained over the years through lots of trials and experience uh, let us know so thank you all for watching and have a good day